And Dr. Ajay Lele, space expert from the IDSA, joins us now on the show. Welcome, sir, and wishing you a very happy Diwali. Well, India's Chandrayaan-2 lunar orbiter has made the first ever observation of the effects of the sun's coronal mass ejection on the moon. How significant is this observation in terms of its purely scientific importance? Uh, wishing you all a very happy Diwali. I think this is a very significant observation uh, which uh, ISRO's uh, uh, Luna, uh, basically the Chandrayaan-2 mission orbiter has given. Uh, essentially because till date we had only theoretical assumptions that this sort of activity will remain. Uh, but now what happens is that the ISRO's orbiter which is there now for more than six years. In fact, uh, just to tell you that when the orbiter was launched, it was thought that orbiter will last only for one year. But subsequently, there was a realization that the mission had taken off so successfully. Uh, so a lot of fuel saving had happened and it is expected that this orbiter will last for seven and a half years. Uh, so out of eight payloads, this particular payload has taken these observations in month of May last year. Uh, these observations are very significant because as you know that as far as Earth is concerned, Earth atmosphere has got certain amount of layers. So whatever coronal mass ejections happen, they do not directly come uh, in the contact of the surface of the Earth. Uh, there is certain amount of absorption which is done because of the Earth's atmosphere. But that is not the case with the Moon's atmosphere because there is no Moon atmosphere. That's why it is an exosphere, a very thin layer, uh, which has got uh, gases like argon, neon, helium and all that. Uh, so whenever such type of a coronal mass ejections happen, they directly hit the surface of the Moon. And because of the coronal mass ejections, uh, the atoms from the surface of the Moon, they rise in the height. And since there is no gravity, they remain in a particular position at that height and this increases the pressure. Uh, theoretically, we were aware of it, but now ISRO has proved it scientifically. Particularly since now the entire world is looking at Moon, uh, not as only a uh, activity to undertake certain amount of emissions, but from a future colonization of a Moon. So if humans are going to stay over there, uh, various activities are going to happen over there, definitely we need to factor in the issues related with space weather. And this is what this particular invention has told us. Uh, just to tell you the history of a space weather in recent times in the year 2022, Elon Musk had launched for his Starlink constellation around 49 satellites. But at that time, coronal mass ejections, the CMEs were so strong that 40 of that satellites had gone unserviceable. Because we all know that how the coronal mass ejections actually impact the electronics part of the satellite systems. And that is the most dangerous thing. So tomorrow when you are going to undertake missions to moon, missions to Mars and uh, other planets, basically your navigational systems, your communication systems, if such type of activity happens, then it will give you certain amount of a misreadings. And that's why this particular activity which has happened and particular uh, formulation which ISRO has made based on the scientific data which has been observed. Uh, if you see the data was observed in the year 2022, but we came to know about it only yesterday. This is because a lot amount of uh, activities do happen in between and the scientific papers are getting peer reviewed. So all types of precautions are taken before you come to any specific conclusion. Okay, so uh, what do these latest findings, uh, Dr. Lele, tell us about, uh, of course, the future lunar missions and the design of human habitat on the moon? Uh, definitely. When you're going to design a human habitat, you need to factor in the issues related with space weather. Uh, because what happens is that on Earth, we always factor in the aspects of weather because that is what is visible. But as far as these planets are concerned, there is no atmosphere over there. So you feel that there is no weather, so we need not to factor that thing over there. But sun always emits the CMEs and those CMEs at times reach to the surface of the earth or the surface of the moon and you need to factor them. The possibility, the probability of such type of a CME is directly hitting to the lunar surface is very less. But if you're going to have a human colonization over there, then definitely you need to factor in these things because the people, the astronauts will have a certain amount of impacts because of radiation uh, and all other side effects of these coronal mass ejections. And if you have to have a human establishment over there, you have got no other option but to factor in these things and plan and actually design your entire structure where humans are going to stay on the surface of the moon. You will have to have a certain amount of uh, solar hardening mechanisms to be put in practice because that's the only way you can avoid getting impact of uh, these types of CMEs. 
Okay, and uh, where do you see India standing as a space exploring nation in say 20 years from now? You see, as far as this particularly, let's stay on the same topic of a space weather. Uh, India has launched a satellite called Aditya L1 a couple of uh, years back. That also is actually going to study or is studying the activities which are happening uh, on the surface of the sun. Because that's what is the basic challenge which is going to come up. I'm not saying that this challenge was not there earlier, but the activities in space were very limited. So the challenges of a space weather were not looked into very seriously. But that's what is going to happen now. Since you're talking of 20 years hence, I can say that we are having an ambition of sending a human to the moon by 2040. Mm. Uh, so definitely you need to factor in the aspects of a space weather very significantly in all your space missions. And India has already started working towards it. Chandrayaan 2 is just one example. Aditya L1 is already undertaking a lot amount of observations and pitting those observations into the global system where all these activities are monitored. Then we have got other satellites also like Astro Satellite, which is again a very important satellite which is telling us about the galaxies and other aspects associated with the cosmos. Uh, so I think at one end we are developing satellite systems for the purposes of social economic development uh, where we are putting remote sensing satellites, communication satellites, navigational satellites and at other end we are looking at a bigger picture, we are looking at a cosmos and the activities like this, the inventions like this basically are part and parcel of India's entire game of looking towards cosmos very positively. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ajalele, for uh, sh throwing more light on India's strides in space technology. Wishing you a very happy Diwali, sir. Thank you. Same to you.